What's going on, guys? Welcome to my Stellaris Federation's review. I know I'm a little bit late, but you know, better late than never. All right, let's just dive right into the pros and cons and get right into it. Starting out with the first pro, this game adds a whole new dimension to Stellaris. Being able to do a Federation in this game changes a great deal of how you play the game. Because it enhances. Before you had Stellaris, and then there was a Federation system in there, but it was so bare bones. In here, it's been expanded. And it now is able to do so many things. So, as you can see here, you have a whole bunch of members in the Federation. And it gives you a little bit of information here. But the one thing that I really love about this system is it gives you the feeling that you're part of a bigger organization. You know, like going through these different tabs here, you can get an idea of how every member is doing, their ethics, their opinions, their tech. You also get an idea of the Federation fleet, right? So everybody contributes to a Federation fleet. And I mean, it's pretty good, um, but we're on the losing side of a war. So that's our best fleet, <laughs> which is not good. But when I, as I was playing the game, you know, always going into this side here, I always felt like I was part of a, a bigger whole. And I really love that feeling, you know, that, I, that I'm not just this one nation on the map that's trying to paint the whole map one color. I'm part of a large organization that's working hand in hand. I felt like I was the United Federation of Planets, which was really awesome. The next pro I have to say is this right here you have the laws of the Federation. This changes how the Federation runs. So as you can see here, we have fleet contributions. So this changes a whole slew of things. So right here, you see uh, my Federation contribution is medium. So every member of this Federation from the Metak Consciousness to Yon Imperium is contributing 20% of the naval capacity to the Federation, which gives us these nice fleets here, you know? Other cool things, I like this, you have succession type uh, rotation, you can just do the strongest uh, succession term, you can always change that, fleet construction, subjects can join, I really like that. The one other cool thing I really like here is you have war declaration. Now, you could do president decides, whoever is running the federation can say, I'm going to go to war, and that was a... A sticking point early with my buddy here when he joined the federation he wanted to automatically go to war with these guys the uh, foundation and thankfully i had it on majority vote i was 50 percent of that vote and i said no it's a bad call at the time actually because these guys expanded and now they're kicking <laughs> they're kicking our tail but <laughs> Overall, I really love that because it gave me the flexibility and say, look, I'm part of this federation. You can't just do whatever you want kind of thing. So I really like that. Uh, but it gives you a whole bunch of things like inviting individual members. Uh, you could do a majority vote or the president decides, you know, a whole bunch of things. I really like that you can do separate treaties. So a lot of really amazing things in here that kind of gives substance to the federation, makes it feel real. So another pro here is these perks that you get with the different levels of Federation. I'm at level five, so I get all of these. But as you get stronger and the cohesion gets better, right, you get nice little bonuses like Federation Naval Capacity counts for 25% more. You get an additional envoy. You get things like gain one unity for each envoy assigned to the Federation. So you get really cool Ooh, speed. I didn't know about that. Ship speed is increased by 10%. Oh, that's nice. I didn't even know about that. So you get lots of really cool perks by being part of the Federation. So I really like that diplomatic weight plus 10 that comes in handy. So you get really nice perks by being part of the Federation. It's not just like, hey, you're going to help me out. I'm helping you out. It's like, hey, we're helping each other out. Plus, we're getting these nice, cool bonuses. And last but not least is this, the Galactic Community. I just call it the Galactic Senate because when this feature came around and I started getting involved in it, it felt like the Galactic Senate from Star Wars. And I was like, you know, you have, I was really, really like impressed by this system. Cause like, honestly, this feels like almost like the Star Wars Senate. Or if you ever watched the uh, first few movies of Star Wars, this actually 
looks like it you know like you got the emperor here you got those two cronies on the side and then everybody else in there and you decide on certain matters in the galactic community right so the galactic senate is a compromise of all the members of this galaxy and you know you vote on certain things like minor research thing i can abstain support i can call in favor you know and you can even submit certain things so you can go in here and you can actually select something that you want to change uh, and then you can do a call in favor so you can you know have other members kind of like help you push this legislation through and you know get it to the galactic senate so you know you can actually pass it and it'll help you. And each one has perks. So army upkeep, uh, defense, army morale, which is this guy here. You know, whole bunches of things, research speed. Well, definitely that's not good. That's why I didn't vote for it. <laughs> My research is not that great as you can see up top. But yeah, so you, you definitely want to keep an eye on this. It will affect you. So if they pass like some kind of legislation that requires ship upkeep, and you decided to abstain or not even get involved and this passes it affects you so you want to kind of get involved so while I'm playing the game it's a really great because it keeps you active with this system not only are you trying to you know work on the economy system your military but this is a nice like all right let me see what's going on here because I need to increase my ship capacity or I need to increase my naval capacity or what have you you can actually affect your empire through this and you need to keep an eye on it because it can negatively affect you too. You also have a galactic council, like three major, uh, you have a couple of major empires that are like kind of run this council here. And I kind of consider this like the United Nations Security Council. These guys have kind of, I believe like special capabilities. Uh, I haven't been part of this security council. My buddy is, I think, no, he's not. I think he was, but one of my, Federation members is in there and two of oh my meta conscious two of my Federation members are in there So that's good one of my enemies is in here So they get I believe special capabilities So if you're part of the Galactic Council, you have special resolution power speed things along and proposing processes so Usually the top of the top is usually up here. I'm rarely ever I think one time maybe I was up here So it really adds a lot of really cool substance to the game so i really love this it adds a whole new dimension and it kind of combines like the federation side of star trek with this one here and then the galactic senate from star wars so it kind of gives you like the best of both worlds all right now let's go to the cons so going to the cons all right the first one right here is you can't share technology and that becomes a problem because i have my shipyard here now the federation has a battleship. I believe one of my buddies actually developed this battleship, right? Now I can actually build the battleship, right? And it becomes part of that Federation fleet. But I can't build it for my fleet, which I would figure I could since we're all like one big organization can share technology kind of thing. So that's one thing that I didn't like. I, I wish because we're part of a federation that we could share technology, ship designs, you know, things like that with one another. You know, if he has wormhole tech, he should be able to give it to me. Things like that. I would love for that to be in the game. And the other con that I wanted to mention, and it's not in this game, there was another game that I'm playing where I was with a buddy of mine. It was me and him and we were kind of like in this part of space and we formed the federation. And there was another federation around here that had kind of like the same ideals with us. And since they were a federation and we were a federation, you know, we couldn't have them join our federation. You know, like they had to be their own thing. And I would have loved that, you know, we could have combined federations. You know, like their federation mixes with my federation. We become this massive federation, you know, this massive organization. And I wish that would be incorporated into this. Hopefully in the future, maybe patch, that would be cool. But in conclusion, I wanted to mention that Stellaris Federation provides exactly what I wanted for Stellaris. The ability to form and be part of a larger organization. To give me a break from the military and the economy and painting the map of my color here, right? And focusing more on galactic issues and laws that deal with my organization. I really love that. And Solaris Federations provides that. 
So this is a huge addition to Stellaris. I love it. I think this is like one of the best additions to this game. And for 20 bucks, for me, it's a must buy because without Federations, it's like having a pasta dinner without sauce. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just cheese and pasta. You know, it's missing that 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 flavor right there. So I love that they included this because it adds that flavor. It adds the sauce. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Catch you in the next one.